Hi, my name is Naomi Ernie and this is my story, how I survived an acid attack. I was 12 when I met this friend and we both went to the same secondary school. Our relationship grew, but it was also very toxic. Certain signs and things that she did, I should have looked out for. She would just berate me sometimes and say really horrible things. When I was in school as a teenager, I was quite shy. So I kind of didn't like confrontation. I tried my best not to be argumentative. And with her, she had a very weird way of being. Other girls noticed that she was quite begrudgeful. It was something that a lot of girls wanted to stay away from. If I was her friend, I did not want to be on the bad side of her. As we were teenagers, her family were quite strict, so she wasn't always allowed out. So I had a lot of other friends and I was quite popular in my school year. And sometimes in the classroom when I would be laughing with my friends, she would just send me over a blank stare, a threatening stare even. I had people warn me, I had people also laugh at her. They used to say she was like copying me that she wanted to be like me and stuff like that. So like, they used to say like, she was quite obsessed. When people would express this to me, I would always say, you know, she's my friend. I would always defend her and say we're friends. There was a slow separation in our friendship. And at this point I was 18. We were studying at different places. We just didn't see much of each other. And I had a boyfriend and she sent him a really horrible text, just saying a lot of horrible things about me. When I heard that it came, the text was from Mary, I remember texting her saying, I don't know why you sent this text message. It was just no need for her interference in my relationship. And it was just a new relationship. She didn't know much about it. So she was just trying to ruin things for me. And that was the first sign I saw that something was wrong. So I confronted Mary about the messages. We argued, it was quite a bitter argument. And then I didn't speak to her for about a year. And she called me one day and she was like, hello. And I was like, who is it? And she was like, it's Mary. And I was like, oh, Mary, how are you? I wasn't angry anymore. I was now in a new relationship. So I had a new boyfriend. So I was just over the past and she had said to me you know I was so angry with you I wanted to throw acid in your face she was angry at me because I think for the first time in our friendship I really gave her what she was giving me back and I think it was years of like a lot of insults and just berating me that I just all put together and I just kind of like let go in that instance and just kind of went off on her. After she told me that, I was like, you know, if someone was to do that to me, they're going to prison, right? Like, that's not possible. And I was, she was just like, you know, oh, you know, she was just joking that she didn't really mean it. And then we went on to just kind of say sorry to each other, forgive each other and like move on. She came to see me one day actually when I was working in Victoria's Secret in Stratford Westfields. I was kind of becoming again really popular and I had my boyfriend. So the day that it happened, I was getting ready for work. I had a late shift. I remember going to Stratford and just feeling like, oh, the day's gonna be short. It's gonna be over and done with him. Before you know it, I'll be back home. And then on my way home, as I was getting off the bus to cross the road to go home, I was on the phone to my boyfriend while I was on the bus. And that's when I saw someone in a niqab. She was wearing all black and she had like a black covering. So I didn't recognize it was her. And as I was about to cross the road, I just felt a huge splash. And I was screaming, I remember I was screaming, screaming, screaming. My skin was burning. I still have the scars here 
obviously on my face, some on my chest. I just remember running to my door, screaming, screaming. And then my mum opened the door and I just saw the whole house, my whole family's face just dropped. I remember running upstairs, taking off my lashes, taking off my clothes, having to go in the bath. My godmother had to like rinse me, throw so much water on me, throw so much water on me. My mum was calling the ambulance. My cousins were all around me in the bathroom, like, you know, put her in the bath, throw water on her. And I remember I was just shivering, shivering, shivering making noises just like who would do this to me am i ugly am i ugly no one's ever gonna marry me no one's ever gonna marry me i'm ugly now no one's ever gonna marry me the ambulance came and i was rushed straight to the hospital i just remember being sat down on like a wheelchair and then on a chair and them having to pour like this huge shower of cold water on me freezing cold as my skin is my flesh is literally being burnt i was in the hospital for a month i had to have surgeries on my face so the first layer my skin had been burnt third degree so they had to take off all the burnt skin and replace it with skin from my thigh and put it on my face and put it on my scars. The acid had burnt my eyelids so it had got into both my eyes and burnt off this eyelid and I had to have skin from behind my ear removed to create an eyelid. Initially I thought someone was out to kill me so while I was in hospital I was feeling like I just missed a lucky shot like I was very lucky to be alive so I'm just gonna troop this through until we find out who did it at the time I didn't know who had done it I didn't know who it was until the police had told me that Mary was the one underneath the niqab basically the bag she war that day she brought to the police station when being questioned and from there on they searched her home and found evidence that it was her i had left the hospital and when i found out that it was mary that had done it i basically couldn't eat and speak for about three days i was in such shock in utter shock i couldn't say anything Mary was sentenced to 12 years and she had to do six so she's out now. When I found out it was her it shocked me because after the attack I had a surprise birthday party for my 21st birthday so my ex-boyfriend threw me a surprise birthday party. I at the time had no eyelids. I could barely walk because of my skin graft but I went and Mary showed up knowing that she was the one that had done it. Mary showed up. At this point, I didn't know that she was there and she was there pretending to cry. And I was rubbing her back saying, don't worry, I'll be okay. Don't cry, don't cry. I finally connected the dots and I realized that she really meant what she said and she did it. So like I can only wonder what was going through her mind She obviously was very jealous of me Which was something that I didn't really pick up on I didn't notice I just thought she's kind of outlandish with everyone <laughs> So this is just her kind of personality And then obviously when all said and done And she did what she did I was like oh wow She was really 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 jealous this is the ultimate betrayal i used makeup as a way to move on it really helped me just restore the essence of myself and that importance of i'm still here i've had to have countless surgeries i've had to have countless help with you know doctors and nurses in terms of my health, my mental health, and trying to stay positive and be positive. It gets hard, it still is quite hard. Every day is a different day, and every day brings something else. <laughs> so at the moment, I am still recovering. 
I've done a makeup course and just how to do uh, hair and media makeup, how to do fashion and photography, camouflage, uh, body painting, stuff like that. It was really, really exciting. I would love to have my own makeup line. That is my goal. I've learned so much over the years from doing my own makeup as being a burn survivor. And it's something that I would love, love, love to share with others. I'm learning that we all have insecurities. We all have problems. We all have things that were hurdles we're trying to overcome and to just keep going and keep striving and take each day as it comes. There's going to be bad days. There's going to be good days and just make sure you have someone to speak to when you do feel down and when you feel good make sure you uplift others too and I guess I'm having a good day so I hope this message uplifts somebody I really do hope so I share my story because I think it's a powerful story and it's a story for me about survival and having to survive in this world being a young black woman and being a burn survivor and having to deal with everyday day-to-day -day situations people staring in the past it was people making comments just having to get through day-to-day -day life even just with me myself and I like my health and you know your health is your wealth and I just want people to take care of themselves I want other burn survivors to keep telling their stories and I love listening to them they empower me <laughs> and I hope this is my story empowers them too and everybody else I have forgiven Mary for what she's done um I just want to move on with my life and be the best that I can be. My advice for anyone that's at a low point from being a band survivor is to just look at your scars and understand that you have overcome so much and you will keep overcoming and that God has something planned, especially for us burn survivors, especially where everything is so physical. I think it's a great way to be able to tell your story, but not just tell your story, but have people feel it with you. They can see the scars and scars are, are beautiful. I've had to learn that my scars are beautiful and burn survivor scars are beautiful. And I've had to see the beauty in these scars. The beauty definitely is within the beholder. Thank you so much for listening to my story. I hope you've all taken something positive from it.